Hello and welcome to IS Primers. Now before going ahead with today's daily news analysis, just a short message. See the prelims is coming, um, right, it's very very uh, close, so about a month plus time we have. So if any of you have certain queries or having difficulties in scoring well in the mocks, serious candidates would always be giving mocks at this time. So if you are having a problem, you're getting more negatives, anything. Oh, you want to know about the strategy, anything that is bothering you, you can just get in touch with me at any time. You can just message me on my WhatsApp or Telegram, I'll get back to you. Because and there is no fees for this. Now this is important because this one month time period is very, very uh, crucial because if you miss out on the mains, right, if you miss out on the seat for mains, then it will be very, very unfair. Because ultimately it is the mains examination which decides your fate, your preparation is revolving around the mains paper. Prelims is just a one day affair. And within that also you are preparing only for one paper that is the GS paper and not so much on the CSAT also. The more of your focus goes towards the mains and if you miss out on that, that will be very very unfair. Right, so you can always get in touch with me. So no fee for any, any of this, it's very crucial for you. So if a short advice helps, so be it. Okay, now moving on with today's uh, analysis. So yeah, 21st of April and uh, as always, I share questions for mains answer writing practice and you can get these evaluated. So two answers every week. So I have two questions today. I'm using a past year question on Edward Snowden, but it is very, very similar to the news event that was there. And this is not so much of, you know, you will think international thing, world affair. I find that more relevant from the perspective of ethics, GS4. And some of which can be applied to the Indian context also. So I'll, I'll discuss that later. Then the other question is about the sea level rise and how it may affect our cities. This article provides us good facts. So you have to jot down the facts, right? That's all you need actually. And mitigation measures are not given. So that I'll provide you separately in the comment section. I'll post the link so you'll get it. So fine. So these two topics rests all are quite unique. Actually, it's very rare that happens. But uh, many of many of the days we keep repeating. So there were actually many articles which I wanted to cover. But for the time being, I'm leaving them and we'll have more opportunities. So today, tomorrow, we'll cover those also. Okay. So UK court issues order to extradite Assange to USA. So I told you it's about ethics and the other personality is Edward Snowden on which I have the ethics case study, which I'm going to discuss. So very, very similar themes. Okay. So first of all, Julian Assange uh, is an Australian editor uh, who founded the WikiLeaks. So he founded a, uh, founded a platform where all the wrongdoings or you know, misconduct of the state is made public so that people have the right to know in a democracy, people have the right to know as to what all wrongs that the state is doing. Okay, so he founded this and uh, it came into prominence in 2010 when a US Army intelligence analyst, Chelsea Manning, revealed some confidential information of the state, some wrongdoings that had taken place like Baghdad airstrike, collateral murder, Afghan war logs, etc, etc. Right, so all of this was made public. It was revealed to uh, this person Assange and he made it public in the WikiLeaks. Okay, now you see the issue. The issue is that, uh, it, it, read the article also, extradite Assange to USA. USA wants him. Extradition means he is in UK right now and USA wants this person back into the territory because they want to try this person as to how can you reveal our information how can you tap into our systems and make all this information public? Quite legitimate. Okay. So here we get certain issues like relevance for UPSC, where a person is exposing the wrongful conduct of the state. But it may also go against the national interest. For example, this has happened, so it undermines the reputation of the US military. Now the same actually, we can actually apply with reference to in Indian context also, maybe there is a whistleblower who is talking about the wrongdoings took place under AFSPA and it brings bad repute uh, to, to the armed forces or to the Indian state or with reference to Sri Lanka or with reference to Myanmar. 
right so any way it is applicable so wrongful conduct making it public and with the state also the state will always resist making this information public if even if they do this wrong because they don't want to be seen badly by the people or internationally rights and concerns associated with whistle blowers now in this case with julian paul assange is nothing but a whistle blower he is raising the whistle that see this wrong has taken place and making people aware or we also have the case of edward snowden who was uh, who, who was a computer expert uh, working in the uh, the cia as an administrator you know computer people have this uh, every department has an administrator who looks into the hardware and software things of that so he was privy to lot some information about the surveillance that the state was doing and how it was affecting the rights or privacy of the people or maybe in indian context we may have we may take the issue of pegasus how the state is doing pegasus somebody gets to know about this right so some wrongful conduct is taking place one wants to make it public the higher authorities the people who are working uh, above edward snowden or anybody are not willing they know that uh, this will not do bode well for their careers also so there is no other way but to go into the public but then when when one goes to the public one is risking one's uh, professional uh, one's career one is being risking one is risking criminal prosecution like julian uh, assange or edward snowden so it's a very very big risk it may be a risk to your life life safety freedom right so in times to come we may have a scenario with more of the social media thing more of those platforms of people having those uh, awareness also we may have more of the situation where we have more of these leaks taking place information leaks we may have more of the whistle blowers now under which circumstances the act of blowing the whistle is justified what are the rights of the whistle blower what are the duties and responsibilities of the whistle blowers that have to be specified now the state would never want whistle blowers but we always have the parliament or the legislature which makes laws and which puts restriction on the state so it is up to the state legis- it's up to the legislature or the parliament to define some framework some reasonable framework under which the whistle blowers are protected or their acts are justified and the state cannot take a legitimate action against them so these are the things that we need to look into from the ethics perspective and responsible journalism is just uh, journalists don't like him actually i got to know when i was doing more research on this i read lot of articles by the way that's why this article this thing is late okay so i read lot of articles on him so he, journalist feels that he is not really a journalist he's just an activist and uh, you know as part of the journalism the media houses have a proper chain of command how the information is coming to the media house and how it is edited and then filtered and then it goes to the public for example he revealed a scam he revealed something about political funding of this us political parties where he revealed the social security numbers like aadhar card numbers in our case or the banking details credit card numbers everything so normally you will see when these leaks take place even if like the panama leaks etc they they hide those things you know they blur those things but in this case nothing like that so responsible journalism in that sense so duties and responsibilities of the journalist now this article i want you to read by yourself i have given some f- uh, framework over here some very important uh, insights you will get after reading this article so you can take a screenshot or i'll pre- always prefer that you read on the laptop okay so let's do this case study you have the case study i have highlighted the main points some of which i actually told you also so Edward Snowden was a computer expert and he get to go, get to know about the Garvel, government surveillance programs and he feels that the government is you know government is justified in surveillance they have to avoid this attacks like the 911 attack that took place twin tower attacks so for public safety it is there they are perfectly justified in surveillance but that surveillance has to be done within some reasonable framework 
for example the privacy of the people the the right of the privacy has to be balanced at the same time e even in the puttaswami judgment in our case there are some safeguards with privacy it says that you can do you can encroach into privacy but only under certain scenarios right so some test has been given some framework has been defined by the puttaswami judgment okay so he said that see i got to know about all this information and i had a duty to even break this law he is breaking the law the espionage act of 1971 i had a duty because the issue of social action something wrong that is taking place in the society must act right so the, there were substantial issues of social action and public morality everything is being heard even romantic conversation or any anything is being heard this could be misused also subsequently so many people when this was made up public many people agreed with snowden and many felt that uh, it has compromised the national security in fact uh, us had to pub apologize to many world leaders also at that time because it came to light that uh, it was ha having uh, listening to conversations even private conversations of uh, the their allies also so there was lot of criticism at that time okay so compromise law and national security for it, which she should be held accountable right so there is a dilemma dilemma that is national security over here but at the same time exposing the wrongful conduct of the state so both issues are there dilemma means there are two bads and you have to choose between the one bad it's it's always easy to choose between the right and the wrong but when there are two wrongs you have to choose the lesser wrong so here it is do you agree with snowden's actions and were they ethically justified even if legally prohibited in fact uh, ethics uh, first chapter ethics and human interface it asks you it upsc has also asked you this question number of times about law and ethics the difference between the two which we have covered in the marathon also okay so this is it so why is it and why is it not now in this when you writing your answer when you write the case study thing and uh, second thing is also related weighing the competing values in this case okay so when you writing the answer first of all bring out a stakeholder analysis in this case we have the government sorry you start with edward snowden then government government's responsibility for public safety right likewise edward snowden and his viewpoints his personal ethics his official responsibilities and responsibility towards the public so those things have to come uh, come into the picture and then bring out the the viewpoint of snowden then bring out the viewpoint of the government how the government is justified how edward snowden is wrong and you can bring one more aspect which is not mentioned government has appointed edward snowden when you appoint somebody you place them in a position you give them some powers you give them some responsibilities so some trust has been you know reposed on you so some trust has been given to uh, has been uh, the organization trusts you but you cannot do the you can you cannot misuse that trust so that trust is very very important so you have break broken that trust right so use all of these judgments and ultimately conclude as to what do you feel is justified and here again when we refer to the whistle blower uh, whistle blowing first thing is whistle blowing is always the last case resort first of all you will communicate with the your sub higher ups you will raise the issue so you keep going upwards ultimately when nothing happens then you go to the whistle blower by collecting all the facts and figures and here again whistle blowing and then going to the media also right you could could have been any other platform but directly revealing to the media so that uh, that again has some repercussions okay so that aspect has to brought out that ultimate it is only the last case resort in which the whistle blowing is justified okay make an argument by yeah, competing values of different different stakeholders that have to be uh, presented over here and the sequence doesn't really matter because the conclusion is uh, this concludes your answer when you write this you can't uh, after the conclusion you cannot say that uh, these are the things it's just that you have to argument by weighing the competing values in this case and then come to the conclusion 
right so 250 words try to write it in the same right so this is it and you can get the uh, answer also it's a past year but don't copy paste your answers so first try to think for yourself because that leads to active learning otherwise it's not a hell it will not help in the long run okay prime minister announces visa for ayush therapy hmm. so prime minister modi great at branding actually to be honest okay so he says that ayush has to be you know we have many alternate uh, means of uh, med medicinal therapies like ayurveda unani then we have Kerala, which people go for their tourism. Then Bollywood people also go to this Bangkok and, you know, some sort of massage is there and then some detoxification, I'm forgetting the term. So, right. So, like that, India can bank on Ayush for medical tourism, medicine tourism, medical tourism as an alternative means of medicine where the allopathy is not very, very successful. Right? There are always limitations to a particular field of medicine. Okay, so that is what he's saying. He says that we can have this heel in India kind of a um, branding for India. And yesterday, by the way, I asked you about reading of the alternate means of uh, med medications that are there. This will be helpful for your problem. So you have to visit the Ayush website for that. So this was being done at Ayush Investment and Innovation Summit in Gandhinagar, the capital of Gujarat. That is not Ahmedabad. Okay, so here it was, he was there, where WHO was also there, WHO head, Director General, and also the Prime Minister of Mauritius. What is he doing? Pravind Kumar Jugnauth. Jugnauth. Okay, so what is he doing here? So they had a bilateral meet, and why so? Mauritius is very, very important for us. I mean, for exam also and for the country also. So you, first of all, you should know where is Mauritius exactly located. And it is located in the Indian Ocean region. Right? You have to find it on the atlas and mark the key issue, you know, key areas associated. Where is it with reference to equator, Tropic of Capricorn? So key things, uh, name of the seas over here. So that you have to do. Where is Seychelles is located? So these things I have to do. Now you have this, right? Uh, Mauritius brief description. It's from the Wikipedia itself. So you read this. See, where is this Black River gorgeous national forest? Why is it called Black River? So that you have to do yourself. Now, uh, public interest litigation has been filed at the Delhi High Court, which says that the government has made certain commitments at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in 2021. That is basically the Paris Summit. So India has made this assurances now Paris summit beyond this we, have, we also have the Glasgow summit also. So, so Glasgow summit is there COP26 the most recent one. Okay, so we, we have made this uh, promises about uh, dealing with the issue of uh, climate change about one third of our area will be under the for, uh, geographical area will be under the forest. 50% uh, uh, of our electricity by 2030 will be under the renewable energy. So, so those promises have been made. So he, the PIL has been filed to the Supreme uh, to the High Court that what is the center doing about this? You have made the promise, but where are you on this front? So he says that uh, the PIL says that until and unless the court intervenes, the center is quite lackadaisical. So the court has to push this issue. So that is why the PIL has been filed. Now, you, if you look, if the actually if the court does this then it will amount to judicial overreach. Judicial activism is when the court is hyper, uh, court is not hyperactive, court is uh, more proactive. But uh, when it starts telling the center this you have to do, it starts telling the executive this is the thing you have to do, if it is not done then it is this. So when it starts making policies that then it is judicial overreach. So the work of the judiciary is to see if the things are done in accordance with the law according to the framework so right or wrong but when it tells executive this has to be done that has to be done then it is your and judiciary is entering into the executive domain okay so for all of this it is saying that uh, this you know there should be a committee the center should form a committee 
So the additional solicitor general, the person who was representing the government, and now you should know about solicitor general, by the way. So there is attorney general, and below this, attorney general is the senior most lawyer of the country. Below this, there is the solicitor general, and then there are additional solicitor generals who would help the uh, solicitor general. Okay. So it says that uh, we have a committee or we have formed, center has formed many com committees including Prime Minister's Council on Climate Change. So we have a committee. Now I wanted to read about this. So I came to this. The council has not met in almost seven years. So if the council has not met, what is the purpose of this council and the council that uh, has the Prime Minister in itself? Okay. And the purpose of this council was to have a coordinated response to issues relating to climate change at national level providing oversight etc 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 right so this is there now here in this article one more thing it says that two-third of our power electricity that is being generated is it is by fossil fuel that is quite generous actually because i cross-checked the government has several uh, fa several facts actually different different fa figures so somewhere it says 60 percent somewhere it says we have already met the target but most commonly uses 80% of energy is coming from fossil fuels, electricity. Okay, now another main space question. So, C may inundate many cities by 2015. Hmm. And when it says many cities, it also means many cities of India. India is a peninsula country. Do we have a map over here? No. Okay. So, right, we are a peninsula country. So, C on three sides. So, many cities will be uh, inundated by 2050 okay so there is a body known as ipcc i think you saw just now saw we have a brief description of ipcc so it is about uh, with reference to climate change it's an intergovernmental body uh, which doesn't have a research wing of its own this is important it doesn't have a research wing of its own uh, in the sense that it doesn't collect data, primary data, just that other people have done their research, it consolidates them and it studies those. Right. So that is their IPCC. Okay. For example, I am not, I am um, doing the newspaper analysis by reading the Hindu. I am not actually going on the ground and seeing what is happening. So in that way. Okay. So IPCC is there. And IPCC revealed that the climate change is increasing, so sea level rise will increase, especially in the Northern Indian Ocean region. So we are in the Northern Indian Ocean region only. Okay. So based on this report, some NOIDA-based company, uh, IT consulting firm known as RMSI, they have provided some indicators. It says that sea level rise is increasing quite rapidly. So initially it was at 1.06 to 1.75 mm. 1 mm is not much. So, from 1987, 1874 to 2004. But now, between 1993 to 2017, it has increased to 3.3 mm. That means it is increasing at a much faster rate. And that can be explained by the polars melting very soon. In fact, the Himalayan glaciers are also melting. So, more river water is also draining into the sea only. So this you can jot down on the sea level rise. This is a good fact you can jot down. Okay, so this is all and this is the thing that I needed. Now let's do the question. So sea level rise induced by climate change is a global problem. So this is actually based on the UPSC statement actually. It's just a few changes made. So sea level rise is a global prom problem induced by climate change. Examine India's vulnerability to the same and suggest so india's vulnerability now this is uh, different and suggest suitable mitigation measures hmm. so you can start your answer by stating about the fact you can give a brief line on the glacial uh, about the uh, melting of the antarctic Arctic and the antarctic polar regions right so th that will that you can do plus you can refer to this report of the sea level rise so this will establish when you use facts it will establish greater credibility fine so greater credibility would be there now what is india's vulnerability we have large number of cities along the coast that is point number one then encroachment taking place so the destruction of the natural habitats like mangroves etc so that is increasing the vulnerability further then 
most of the people the richer people would live in the elevated areas while it's the slums the marginalized people who are living in congested areas and areas which are low lying typically you will find this so when the floods take place in whichever city you are in you will find this that the poor are more adversely affected because locationally they were bad plus they had limited means and resources to protect themselves and the impact that will be there on their livelihood will be much much more severe fine so that perspective has to be there so all i want this perspective of poverty to come right poverty marginalized people to come over here so this i will look into it okay now coming to the mitigation measures so you can break your answer into different different parts i have mentioned it as 200 word limit it's intentional okay so uh, now there are two things you know this article this link i'll provide in the comment section okay two things one is short term measures other is the long term measures long term measure is the climate change thing right so that will come in the later part of your answer first start with the short term measures so what adaptation strategy should be there right so some physical barrier should be created some sort of barrier so that so that the water can be stopped right then natural vegetation so some low lying fruits basically those then that are easier to achieve so those have to be mentioned first and then so mention three or four of them there are many points over here just mention two three selected points and then also mention about that see ultimately this is a global issue the is so about the issue of the sea level rise because of the global warming melting of the antarctic and therefore arctic so therefore we need to take corrective measures so that we can deal with this situation the, and which you have done by the way you just said where is it ha ah, these measures so some measures on the climate change front has to be taking place now this is about the ipcc i explained to you you can read and yes this is important it got a nobel peace prize in 2007 fading history hmm so there was this image and this is about this chinese fishing nets in kochi so this place is known as fort kochi heritage zoo i couldn't find much about this so maybe this is an initiative of the kerala tourism itself so they want to kochi right fort kochi heritage zone they want to protect this area now from prelims perspective read more about this and one more heritage zone is muziris i spelled it wrong mus muziris so read about muziris also so it was a place for roman trade that was taking place right so muziris uh, the trade um, uh, muziris heritage city so it, ha- it is being pro- uh, you know promoted by the uh, um, by the kerala government tourism so we refer to the kerala tourism so it is the first european township in india it's famous for vasco da gama square santa cruz basilia Uh, Saint Francis Church. So certain other things that is protected, and this is the fishing net. Just in case you couldn't figure out, so here it is. Now it is under risk um, because of this uh, water metro. So water metro terminal. So that is coming up. So it is under risk. So what I could visualize was that this water metro will need more berths like this, where where this boat would be stationed. so it will promote uh, local connectivity in the kerala you know backwaters are there so people traveling so roads uh, better than roads we can have the waterways okay so it will these like this like the berths that are there maybe this area was having these fishing nets so it will affect the heritage in that sense so because of this so this is a fading history buildings can be constructed in mass with space brick so what is the space brick science and tech hmm. so it has been created by isro and iisc so using the soil from mars maritian soil uh, mixed with a uh, gore gum bacterium urea and nickel chloride so with this they have been able to create this brick uh, this brick small bricks now i don't know how practical that would be we can't make bricks and send it to mars it's a little bit too heavy right so i i really don't know but yes we have found a way of making bricks now what can be done is not mentioned in the article 
is we can find a way of having some machines like 3d printers etc where we can manufacture on mars itself using robotics the tools of the fourth industrial revolution etc so that can be done so at least we know a way of how to make cement uh, how to make how to how do we make bricks using this soil and if we want colonization of mars now sending people on mars is one thing uh, we can also have colonization may also means using the mars territory for mining activities over there so for that also we may be needing some structures right so that can be done rather than having people making bricks it makes sense and we can't export bricks that also doesn't make sense so let's see at least we are uh, making some progress over here hmm give priority to tilting trains not k rail lines i think it's too late uh, this expert's opinion because the project is already underway okay so i hope you know what k rail is connecting kerala the state of Tam south so kerala like this so connecting north the south to north north to south of kerala high speed rail would be there now because of this k rail lot of protests are going on people feel it will affect the environment new rail line will have to come high speed train would be there so this expert says why do we need all this further this area this kerala is prone to disasters also so we can use the existing infrastructure we can use the existing infrastructure and have high speed trains on that now for high speed trains you know when the turns are there when the turning has to be there if you are driving a scooter also or a car also when the turning is there you would have to slow down so he says no we can have tilting trains so like you know on this uh, this uh, when you riding fast you can you can tilt a bit riding a bike or motorcycle don't do that or in the in the uh, motor uh, tv you would have seen the motor uh, motorbike race right so tilting train so that will allow greater speed so the train wouldn't have to slow down so we can use the existing infrastructure that is there rather than creating new infrastructure so initially we can have this it will be more cost effective also more environment friendly also right so some of these options are being given to uh, given by this expert this is important um, there were other there was one more editorial i wanted to cover that was about the imf uh, imf and the risk associated with indian economy but i think that's time and again it's repeated a repeated talk topic be it imf be it rbi's inflation numbers whatever okay let's do this so change situation pakistan's frustration with taliban so what happened was pakistan conducted i hope the map is not too small so pakistan conducted counter you know cross border strikes into the afghanistan like we had the surgical strikes so we so something like that so they did this so they fired missiles uh, and targeted a militant group known as tehreek e taliban pakistan taliban you know there are many many factions of taliban so there are some most of the, one of the faction of taliban is against the state of pakistan and like the original taliban which is ruling over afghanistan at this point they wanted to create an islamic emirate in afghanistan likewise the tehreek e taliban pakistan wants to create an islamic emirate its own version of islamic state in pakistan and this has created lot of havoc lot of peshawar school attack that took place that was done by this organization only so what they have been pakistan traditionally has been doing is uh, Uh, what traditionally they have been doing is they have been countering the tehreek e taliban pakistan on one end and on the other hand they have been promoting the main taliban group of afghanistan right so they, they have been looking at that perspective with the idea that uh, they were concerned that uh, there is more and more of indian influence in afghanistan when the democratic government of afghanistan or us led afghan government was there so they had a concern that there is more of this indian influence in afghanistan which undermines india's interest pakistan is being sandwiched between india and afghanistan which they didn't like so they always had this obsession of creating strategic depth in afghanistan and i always knew this would fail so strategic depth in afghanistan the idea being that pakistan has a deep state in or strategic depth in afghanistan in the form of taliban 
which they will you know pakistan will support taliban in forming the government uh, ruling over this territory which will help in targeting the indians eventually ousting them from the territories which which has happened by the way and on the other hand a friendly state that will be pro pakistan and one of the things would be that they will help target the groups that are against pakistan or causing havoc in pakistan like the tehreek-e taliban pakistan clear so till now that's fine okay now what we we are saying at this moment is that this policy has quite a kind of backfired because initially the taliban wanted the support of pakistan they wanted their support they wanted their military whatever they wanted support to fight against the afghans but now they have the territory they have it to themselves and there is an history of afghanistan and afghan people that any foreign intervention onto them is not liked by them we had the ussr invading into afghanistan didn't work foreign hand usa helped uh, formation of taliban with the help of pakistan against the ussr eventually when ussr was out it backfired against the usa so it never works that way now taliban has formed their islamic emirate and now they are saying that we don't want this why are you interfering in a state affairs but th- that was the idea of strategic depth okay so this is there right so they say that if you have this cross border strike again there will be repercussions on pakistan so taliban you know uh, what they are doing is they are uh, somewhere they are not then uh, um, since they are again taliban only they are pashtuns only so they uh, they are showing their affinity towards tehreek e taliban pakistan even though it is against uh, pakistan at the moment at the same time uh, the the state of taliban is showing resistance from pakistan that means all is not well with between these two over here and at this juncture they don't need the help of pakistan rather what they need is international recognition so this line is very important the taliban are not ready to disown the tehreek e taliban pakistan right tehreek e taliban pakistan and they would not remain a pakistan proxy for ever right so this is there now from prelims perspective uh, see you can see it on the map wakan corridor so see this is there this is jammu and kashmir by the way pakistan occupied so this is the wakan corridor which connects india obviously there is pakistan now so india china pakistan afghanistan tajikistan right so this territory is geopolitically very very important and this line is known as the durand line which line durand line d u d l r a n d and this line is known as ratliff line so these things are important for your prelims hmm so this is the time of the newspaper analysis where i realized this article this is going very long okay so first article i had to drop the front page article so sc holds eviction rape in jahangirpuri so here again we find that uh, the targeting of the houses of from the uh, minorities is being seen over here and uh, without any short notice even when the supreme court has called for a stay order on the ev- uh, eviction drives even then the state is not listening so now supreme court has taken a stern view of this so that was there in the front page uh prime minister launches new plans in gujarat tribal areas and uh, there was also electric locomotive manufacturing unit i look closely couldn't find much here but yes what you can do is for prelims perspective homework gujarat tribals in gujarat area that will help you with your mcq based questions also so tribals and which all region are they located so you'll check for uh, rajasthan also madhya pradesh also so that will help ceasefire ex- naga ceasefire agreements extended so we have naga accord which was between nsc and isaac moya moiva then there is another uh, group known as kaplang group so kaplang is a militant group earlier it was isaac moiva and kaplang so kaplang wants violence only isaac moiva said we want peace right so kaplang is in that myanmar side right now of nagaland okay then there are other militant factions also with which 
the Indian government is negotiating. Uh, the, so these are again NSCN only. So different different uh, adjectives attached to it. So NK group, uh, K Kango group, right? So all these uh, groups are there. National Socialist Council of NSCN. So different different groups are there. So they are talking to them and looking for a ceasefire violation. Let's see what happens in the long run. I'm hoping to get more on this Naga court. Still now not much. Next is war may dominate Johnson. So President, uh, sorry, Prime Minister of Britain coming to India, right? So like all leaders, he's also coming to India and they are going to quite likely that they would be talking about the Ukraine uh, war that is going on. And I think India's views have been very, very stern on this thing that uh, they've been saying that, you know, support the sanctions and all those things. And India is saying that um, you are also buying oil. Why are you telling us? We are buying just one to two percent of our global consum Indian consumption. What about you? Right. So let's see what happens. Nirmala Sitaraman has urged IMF to assess, assess Sri Lanka. Right. So IMF they are being negotiating. Sri Lankans are negotiating with IMF. So uh, Indian government is also helping uh, in some way or the other to bail out Sri Lanka. It will not be sufficient. IMF much more resources. So they can play a role in. And normalizing this situation and we don't want the situation to go very very bad because we may have a refugee crisis in fact the news below this which I didn't cover so more uh, Tamil uh, Tamil uh, Sri Lankans coming over to the Indian side so we may have a refugee crisis we may have China uh, Sri Lanka falling into the debt trap and ultimately leasing out land to Chinese which could be used for defense infrastructure by the Chinese Right, so these are certain concerns which because of which we are very very wary of the situation and normally one more perspective you know when there is economic instability there are lack of jobs in such cases we have more of this civil unrest we have violent activities communal incidents taking place so instability in this region will affect our region also A.K. Sood is new principal scientific advisor. Hmm. Helpful for prelims because uh, I mean in our exam it is not asked maybe in some other exam state PCS or um, SSE in that it will help but yes. Okay so he is the new principal scientific advisor. Now your thing is you should know what is the principal scientific advisor and it says that he was the prime uh, the PM he was part of this group. PM Science Technology Innovation Advisory Council and what all things does it do we have it here now the responsibility of the prime principal security advisor is to advise the government on the science and technology policies interventions and how it can contribute to socio-economic right socio-economic uh, the science contributing to the benefit of the society and economy of the country now I want you to read more on these each initiative that is part of this initiative PM SDI AC. So nine major missions have been done. So read more on these. These will help you with your pre. Navy chief unveils joint navigation chart in Maldives. Now this has to be read in context of the geopolitics of this region and geopolitics is always done with the help of the map. Hmm. Okay, so you see this uh, this thing, you see the stars over here. So the stars is, you know, the exact heading of this article was uh, the competition between the Chinese and the Indians. So Chinese are uh, trying to have more and more of this presence in the Indian Ocean region. So naval bases, sorry, this is the Indian side is also there. Okay, so more and more presence of their presence around the Indian Ocean. Uh, region that, that is the idea and we are concerned about this for example they are having this presence in Gwadar then in Chittagong so Chinese built refueling stations right so we are concerned Hamban Dota again is Sri Lanka uh, Chinese so we are really really concerned about this so this is their uh, board there is India only okay so this is a concern that we will be encircled eventually so one is that we they may have their nuke uh, facilities, nuke submarines, nuke submarines, etc, etc. And it will be detrimental to our national security. Other thing is, this region, Indian Ocean region, we call it as our own backyard. And further, it has its economic significance. 
in terms of um, fishing in terms of mining in terms of trade significance maritime shipping uh, prime minister has been focusing upon uh, sagar security and growth for all in the region somewhere it is seen as a counter to chinese initiatives uh, then uh, the uh, sagar initiative is there uh, and uh, um, mausam right i'm just forgetting right now so some some of the some of the initiatives are there with the indian ocean we want to have more engagement and we want to keep the chinese out now in this case maldives is very very uh, strategically located now the question was asked in the prelims like how it is separated from india by which channel 8 degree channel so that these things you have to note down from your atlas okay so maldives is well placed a small island country with minimal resources china providing uh, funding china funding resources so if it goes closer to china it will be detrimental to our interest and it will have its own exclusive economic zone also so we will have more and more presence of chinese which we will not like so that will not go in our interest so we want to intensify our relations with uh, with maldives over here and our prime minister first prime minister also envisaged the goal of a, having a blue water navy that is india's predominance in the indian ocean region and recently also india said that we want to be the net security provider in the big bimsec summit that net security provider in the indian ocean region that means india wants want to be the key player in terms of the regional security and that means china should not be there okay so what all things are we doing so our uh, naval chief had gone to maldives and uh, naturally so one is that uh, they have this joint navigation chart that is some sort of a consensus as to how indian and uh, the maldives navy national defense force uh, will be navigating the seas the nearby regions then they also handed over hydro hydrography equipment study the water whatever hydrography equipment and this is being done by ins satluj so this ship is doing it ins satluj is doing and we have also played a role in providing them medicines and other critical support specifically during the times of the pandemic in fact once water was not there drinking water so we had exported water from india and we are very close we can do that china is a very far away in that sense okay then we also have the Ch maldives navy has their equipments so we have we provide the maintenance related activity also right so navy's role in maintenance and repair of mndf coast guard uh, fleet right so that is being done so these are the few things that we need to keep in mind and their capital is male m a l e last article and this is again about the navy so sixth scorpion takes to water so scorpion as you can see is a submarine now when you study about the submarine uh, you should know from where are we getting this submarine is it made in india or is it coming from outside and if it is made in india who has supplied us the technology right so certain things that you need to keep in mind then is it diesel powered or nuclear powered so these are basic things that you need to know okay so this is a submarine a scorpion submarine is coming from france uh, under which this is being manufactured in mazagao dockyard which is near mumbai so mazagao dock docks in mumbai so it is being manufactured over there and the french is providing us so mazagao is making it so what is the french doing it is providing us the technology to make this submarines and what is the unique about this well first of all this is a diesel submarine diesel powered submarine but it's a diesel powered submarine but it allows the submarine to be there in the water for a longer time so that is the unique part about this submarine because uh, diesel is what you polluting right you removing the gas from the exhaust ultimately like your cars also so it is very difficult for the ship to be remain in the water for a longer duration of time but these submarines are stealth submarines it is difficult to detect even though they are diesel submarines so that is why a lot of emphasis is on nuclear submarines because they can remain in the water for a longer times now diesel requires air but now we are working on a new technology known as air independent propulsion so air independent propulsion mean without the air 
whatever discharge however it will function it can be there in the water for a longer time it doesn't have to come back to the surface so that is being done so these are the scorpion class submarines and this is the sixth submarine right so so number of submarines were to be provided so i think six there were only there were to be six submarines only and the name of the submarines have been given ins kalavari uh, ins kanderi vagir kanraj so these are the submarines over here right so this is the scorpion class submarine and it is also known as project 75 and below here you can find pm uh, p75i i stands for india okay so this is there now with reference to submarine one more thing i would like to add is that we are having more and more of chinese sub presence of the chinese submarines uh, it's a cause of concern uh, so we will depend on more of these submarine contracts about 50000 crores of uh, co contracts are pending and um, this is a very lucrative uh, contract for any country so germany etc so that is why we are i believe that is why they are more friendly more receptive to our concerns in the recent times because a lot of money is at stake in fact germany has been providing us this smart grid technology net metering technology because they know that in the long run they can provide us with this benefits so let's see i hope this concept of diesel submarine stealth submarine p75 is clear now what you can do is you can read more about these terms what is the meaning of this vag vag here it must be, uh, fish whatever that is vagir kandheri so read more about them just the name what does it mean okay and we have only one nuclear submarine that is ins arihant okay so this is it so this uh, concludes the session so thank you for streaming in to is primers with me shubhashish Bye-bye, take care and all the best.